I'm Jeff Yarborough, and I'm running for mayor of Nashville. Welcome. We're here at Tech Hill Commons, right? We've got the Greater Nashville Technology Council hosting a forum to get to know our candidates. So thank you for running and showing up and putting in the hard work to share your ideas, and hopefully we'll have a, a better Nashville through all of this. So That's right. thanks for being here. And the, the big question, hey, why are you running, and why should someone in the tech community vote for you? Well, this is a high stakes election for Nashville and the city needs to know that it's going to have leadership that it can trust and that will work for them. We know it's high stakes because we are living through a very challenging conflict between the city and the state that is making it harder to solve any of our problems. We know that we're facing a decline in trust because too many people in Nashville feel like growth has been happening to them instead of for them. And I think we've got to get that right. And then third, I think that while we've seen a lot of economic success in our city, you cannot rest on your laurels. You have to continue to invest in your people, continue to expand opportunities, and continue to look towards the bigger future. Uh, the reason that tech voters should vote for me is because I realize that innovation and technology are the dividing line between the cities that are going to be truly amazing and everywhere else. Uh, cities absolutely must lean big into innovation. And I, th I think that people sometimes get confused and think through, I'm going to have a technology policy or a technology office or I'm going to think about the technology sector when really innovation and technology should be a, should be driving the way you approach governance generally. You ought to be thinking about the way that technology is going to shape the economy overall, not think of it as a distinct small sector of your city's future. There's a lot of folks in Nashville who are in the tech community who are thinking about what the next mayor will be doing, especially when we're thinking about our community, but also the industry and jobs that are coming here. So when you think about your vision for the Nashville technology space, what is that? And are there any initiatives that you can share of like, hey, what will you be doing to help clear the way for, for more good? Well, I, so I do have lots of ideas about this. Uh, two things first, though. One, when you think about it, really, what is important about leadership right now is actually setting challenges and thinking through how you're pulling out the ideas, testing what's going to work, and driving the pro those processes to get, actually get better and solve problems faster over time. And then uh, second, you have to really think through how to embed innovation and technology throughout the organization. So one of the things that I want to think through is how do we actually create an, a chief innovation technology officer at a senior level in the mayor's administration so that we are fully embedding that brand of thinking, frankly, into the DNA of the city. Because if you think right about uh, the possibilities of technology, you should think about how places in other countries are using artificial intelligence and machine learning to improve solid waste sorting and increase the amount of what's going thrown in the trash that is ultimately recycled. They're thinking about how to use those technologies to improve traffic and tra transportation infrastructure over time. They're thinking about how you embed technology in virtually everything you do. And you want that to be something that happens at the strategic level. And so I think that that's step number one. Step number two is I think we have to think about economic development a little bit differently. For too long as a city, we've only had like one person who's really the quarterback for economic development. And that means that, that when you've got a big deal company that's a 500 pound gorilla that you're trying to recruit, that the economic development director is really focused on how do you recruit that one person. When you need a broader economic development approach that's going to think through how am I going 
how are we creating the ecosystem, the workforce development structures, the access to capital, so that it, this is not just a place where you're recruiting businesses that are all, have already established themselves, but you're recruiting the startups, the founders, the venture funds, the early stage businesses that, and setting them up to succeed. And so that means that you need to make this a better city to do business and that the mayor needs to work collaborative, collaboratively with industry partners. I usually tell people, if the mayor is the smartest person in the room, it means the mayor needs to invite more people to the room. And so a lot of it is how do you actually bring in industry partners, thought leaders, all the voices around the table so that you're setting a strategy that's not just going to guide the four years of one mayor's economic priorities, but that it's genuinely leading the city's efforts to move the ball down the field on how we can become a technology and innovation capital. And you can actually see in practice that cities have, with mayors that have been forward thinking and have taken this on, have achieved market success. I mean, Austin a decade ago, uh, Miami with Francis Suarez in the last couple of years have really put their shoulders into investing in this space, creating that eco ecosystem and recruiting companies and trying to build the workforce pipelines that they're, you're going to need to actually get the job done. With our workforce pipeline, we want to make sure no one's getting left behind, that people have a path into tech because these jobs are great you know once the deal is done and we can get you know we we have folks here who are hiring for these generational changing jobs for families how do you how do you want to make sure we can continue to be thinking about an inclusive workforce so everybody no no nashvillians are going to be left behind so first that requires recognizing that that is a critical imperative that serves our strategic ends and is not just a feel-good initiative. Uh, actually making sure that you are opening the floodgates so that every person has the potential uh, to actually realize their best outcomes, their best futures, is actually how you get the best ideas onto the table. It's how you get capital into the the companies that are going to actually transform the economy. It's how you get the real work done. Uh, so, and it's n deeply mission critical in a place like Nashville where people almost, uh, we've seen too many economic development initiatives that don't really help us. And if you don't, if you're not very serious about moving the ship on that direction, then I think you're going to see less support across the community for these endeavors. And so that means that you start much earlier from the K through 12 system into our education pipeline to ensure that we are uh, doing that work, uh, providing computer, you know, computer science classes, pushing kids to into the academic coursework that they're capable of, of achieving. I've actually passed legislation to do just that. I co-sponsored legislation on trying to get tech across the board in our schools and also to make sure that every student who's qualified is being pushed into the most advanced coursework for which they're prepared. Too much of the time that doesn't happen and it's only the people who are selected or who, whose parents volunteer them that get pushed to achieve. We need to make sure that we're finding talent everywhere and pushing it across the board and then really working on those transitions between K through 12 into higher ed. And then, but it's not, you can't be a tech capital if you're not thinking about capital. Uh, you, if you don't have the small businesses and the, and, the, and the entrepreneurs and the potential founders, if they can't actually access capital, if they can't access the ecosystem of mentors and networks to help them work through ideas, if they can't access the workforce development resources that are usually only available to big companies and less so to small companies, then you're not going to actually create that system that allows those entrepreneurs and starters of new ideas and, and new companies to really find a spot and achieve what they can. And I've got the record to back this up. You know, for nine years in the Senate, 
I've worked across the aisle, built coalitions to pass over 80 bills. And I think that I'm someone who uses common sense, builds common ground, and bridges divisions to actually get results that matter for people. And that's why I hope people will vote for me this year. There you go. We appreciate your time today. Thank you for running. This is admirable work. Takes a lot of work, and we've got some great ideas all around, and I'm, we're all hoping that this is going to help Nashville be pushed further. So thank you for taking the time to, to do all this. It's really, we really appreciate it. Well, it's been a great day, and thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. This episode has been a production of Relationary Marketing in partnership with the Greater Nashville Technology Council.